Hello, my wonderful little collections of bones. It's me, Glass Lotuses, your friendly and mildly eerie digital artist, writer, and cat lover. How are you doing this evening? I hope your day has been enjoyable. My partner managed to get a professional surround sound system for our living room for 50% of the price, but the catch was you needed to know how to install a professional surround sound system yourself. Luckily, she's a tech genius, but it took her two days and many hours of banging her head against a wall. But now we're vibing to some cool music and it sounds like it's literally inside my head. Bruised foreheads and good tunes aside, let's talk about the next god in the right hand of death pantheon. This is the third of the elemental gods, Air, and she belongs in Chaos's court. Like I mentioned in the previous videos, I like to think of these elemental gods as states of matter as well. So you can also think of her as the god of gases. Cirrus is the god of air, weather, and music. In our current pantheon, she works closely with the god of water to control the storms and weather, and to ensure good harvests for the mortals. She has helped to build floating civilizations for many winged creatures and people, setting islands adrift in the sky to travel around the planet unless otherwise chained to the earth. She has a sort of whimsy to her creations, and in her spare time, she enjoys shaping clouds into prophetic visions to inspire mortals. One of her most common divine inspirations which she likes to pass on is an inspiration for music. She greatly enjoys being a patron of the arts, with music as her preferred media. She regularly blesses mortals with talent in that realm, and song and instrumentation are well sought after and appreciated talents in the mortal realm. Her mortal life didn't last long. As a teenager, Cirrus was one of several sacrificed to the gods of harvest and prosperity of her world, in an attempt to garner their favor and attention in an especially fruitless time. Cirrus had been a particularly skilled flute player and was the eldest daughter of one of the families which oversaw the harvest of one of their society's primary grains. The mortals believed heavily in reincarnation, and while it was a sad affair to have to sacrifice anyone, it was a relief of mouths to feed, and their guilt was negated by the belief that their souls would eventually return. The stunt did get the attention of the gods, but the mortals' lack of guilt was a tad unfounded. While most souls were reincarnated in various ways, Cirrus harbored considerable resentment and anguish and didn't wish to return to that world. The gods of harvest and prosperity took pity upon her, and decided to work together to help her heal and forgive, and to raise her further. There was no air or wind god in their pantheon, but they gave her the energy to be a rather powerful wind spirit. The god of harvest taught her to use her energy to help with wind pollination, and the god of prosperity took an interest in her musical talent, and taught her to perform divine inspiration boosting artistic creation and expression in the mortal world. They also taught her to make storms to water the crops, or to take them away and punish people for their transgressions. As the pantheon and world grew, there was enough energy for a proper god of air, and the other pantheon members went to the council beyond their universe, which has the ability to decide and grant that level of power. They advocated for Cirrus, and Cirrus passed the tests with flying colors. The god of gods, for whom the council worked, granted Cirrus the power of a god. The world flourished, and Cirrus watched as the lives of the people who took hers passed by, and their children lived and died, and so on down the ages. Her resentment slowly faded as she watched the ebb and flow of many lives and forgave those who did what they could think to do in difficult times. That world eventually reached a stable state, and little change was needed anymore. The god of gods saw fit to reassign most of the pantheon to other new universes, and Cirrus moved on to other chapters. Cirrus hates conflict, and during the War of the Gods in our current universe, she took members of all humanoid groups she could, and fled into hiding, taking many of the floating islands with her. The floating island where her divine door was once located has not been seen since. Given that the magic which spread amongst mortals during the war was spread as the gods died, air magic is very uncommon, as it is believed that Cirrus did not die as violently as the others. 
It's almost certain that she wouldn't still be alive, however, as being cut off from the Divine Realm would have meant that her power would have slowly waned until she was unable to maintain a physical form, as is documented to have happened with the God of Death. Powerful gods such as Tiburon, the god of water, and Basker, the god of fire, who died close to the humans and rather violently, had their magic scattered far more broadly. Their magic touched far more people and was more plentiful. Perhaps that's for the best, though. The ability to control air can be rather dangerous in the wrong hands. I wasn't quite sure what direction I wanted to go with for the air god's design at first. My very earliest iteration of her was based off of a bee, but I didn't like the initial sketches and felt the design was overly complicated. I then switched to a design based around bats and clouds, so here you have Cirrus with her bat ears and wings and her curly white hair. While I don't think I had a specific bat species in mind when I originally drew Cirrus, I think she most looks like a pallid bat. Pallid bats are small and pretty cute and have fluffy pale fur on much of their bodies, but their extremities come to dark colors. So the tips of their ears, their noses, and their wings are dark while it kind of looks like they are wearing a fluffy white coat. They kind of resemble Siamese in my opinion, and so does Cirrus. So I think she would be a pallid bat if I had to point to a particular one. They are found in much of western North America, from lower western Canada down into much of Mexico. They primarily eat insects, and interestingly, they eat the most venomous scorpion in North America, the Arizona bark scorpion. While this scorpion can easily kill a human, these bats are apparently immune. The current thinking as to why is that the scorpion's venom acts on voltage-gated sodium channels in cell membranes, which regulate the uptake and release of salt within cells. These bats are thought to have a genetic mutation which impacts this and makes the venom not work on them, where everything else would lose the ability to properly regulate sodium within their cells and their cells would begin to undergo cell death. Aside from eating lethal insects, pallid bats also do eat nectar and thus are important pollinators, just like Cirrus and her wind pollination and support of flying pollinators. Pardon the batty tangent. But on more bat facts, I really wanted to give Cirrus bat ears because I think their design is biologically very cool. I used to go camping a lot as a kid, and the campground my family went to most had a lot of presentations on animals, and the bat presentations were fascinating. Currently, there is the understanding that there are two separate lineages of echolocating bats. The two lineages have long names, but are shortened to yin and yang so echolocation is thought to have evolved twice, and of course, that is highly dependent upon their ear structure. In many bat species, the tragus is really important for directing sound, as are ridges inside the ears, so that little inner ear portion you see in this drawing was meant to represent that larger tragus. Not all bats have it, but I think it's a cool feature, so I wanted to use it. Aside from that, I made her hair fairly largely curled in this first iteration. I wanted to take inspiration from swirling clouds. In later drawings of her though, I changed the texture a bit to make it more tightly curled, but I keep that cloudy inspiration. Since her wings connect all the way down to her upper thighs, I have to be a bit creative with her clothing so that it's not like it's just flapping around. So I went with this almost toga-like design here in this first iteration, where it's kind of tied above and below the wings. For some reason, I felt odd giving her full-on shoes, so I just gave her these foot wraps instead. I imagine if she were to wear shoes, it would be something more like a light sandal or maybe those toe shoe things? Something that just feels more open to nature, I suppose. In any case, this is my wonderful little cloud-loving bat god. What do you think of her? I hope you like her. Thank you so much for listening to my stories today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in learning more about this story, the world, and the characters within it, please like and subscribe. Have a nice night. Bye-bye.